Bausch, I want to welcome all of you who are here in the sanctuary, our video audience as well as our radio audience. Before I pass it over to Amy for, with announcements, I do want to just share with you that uh, uh, some of you have heard that Marion Storm had passed away. Um, if you can, her funeral will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock. If you could attend it, that would be wonderful. So let's continue to keep that family in our prayers. A few other announcements for you this morning. Life Light Festival is going to take place Saturday, August 31st. So make sure you check out the information about that. And some volunteers are still needed. Uh, Sunday school teacher training is coming up on Wednesday, September 4th, along with a confirmation meeting for eighth grade youth and their parents. Rally Sunday, Sunday, September 8th. That'll be the kickoff to the Sunday school year with a chicken barbecue that day as well. And tonight at Lake Farley at 7 p.m., there's going to be an ice cream social for anyone who would like to sign up or learn more about the community Bible study. If it rains, it will be it take place at the Valley Baptist Church. And then just um, a, a couple of announcements about the prayer list. A few names were cut off this week, so I just want to bring those to your attention. Robert Tejan, Donald, Owen Wahlberg, and Caroline Gomer should also be added to that list. And also, um, I do have an address for Ruth Howard, um, if you want to write this down. It is 1905 Sylvan Circle, Brandon, South Dakota, 57005. And I have that if you want that after the service as well. Now, if you please stand and join us in our opening song, Sing, Sing, Sing. Shout your praise. 
Now please join us as we take some time to center ourselves for worship with the song Oceans. responsively in our call to worship. God of life, once more you have called us together for worship. We have come to be refreshed, to be reminded of whose we are, and to hear how you are calling us to be in the world. 
God, in this time together, open our eyes, our hearts, and our very beings to see how you are active in our midst. God, may this time of worship be a time of not only praising you, but also a time of remembering who we truly are. Now please join me in our opening prayer. God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but by our readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead, that in Christ your name may be glorified in all the earth. Amen. Please be seated. You know, I'm always sharing with the congregation that, you know, there's a lot of wonderful things about uh, being a pastor uh, in, in a local church. And one of the great things that we get to do as pastors is do baptisms. And uh, it is my honor and it's my privilege to get to do two of them together. And at this time, I'd like to ask the families and uh, your sponsors to come up. We could get yeah. Get you guys over here and get Reed and over here. Yep. It's perfect. Squeeze in the best you can, you guys. Yeah. I just want to remind everyone if, and, and let you know if you haven't uh, been at a baptism that I've, I've performed before is that, you know, I'm going to be reading some words up here on a piece of paper. Um, you're going to be reading some words up on a screen. Uh, the families and their sponsors are going to be reading some words as well. And I just want us to remember that these aren't just words, right? What I'm saying, I really mean, and my hope is what you say you really mean, and the family, what they say, and the sponsors, uh, they, they mean what, what they say as well, okay? So with that being said, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church, we're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. It is uh, my honor and privilege to, prevent, uh, to present both Brax and Ventley Oliver Wilson and Reed Orlin Gap uh, for baptism this morning. So this first section is for the parents and, and the sponsors. Do you renounce the spiritual force, forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin, then answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Then answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races, then answer, I do. I do. Will you nurture Braxton and Reed in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Then answer, I will. I will. Now this is for the congregation. Congregation, do you who represent Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Then answer, we do. 
Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Braxton and Reed now before you in your care? Now, this is for all of us. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with all of you. And also. God, we, we pray that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Braxton and Reed who will receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And we all respond, all praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you, the Spirit. Okay. 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 Hey, buddy, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. Baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Braxton, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born by water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pass it back for a minute. Get read. Hey, little man. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> read. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Read, I, bab I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's, let's welcome our new, new brothers in Christ here with a hand. I'll pass them back for just a second. Okay. <laughs> and then... Uh, Let's, uh, let's actually do this. I missed a spot here. Let's just lay our hands on these two young men, okay? Everybody reach in, try and, if you can't touch the shoulder of the person in front of you, we'll be touching. Okay, there we go, good, okay. Hey, Braxton and Reed, may the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born of the water and the Spirit, you may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen, gentlemen. All right. Okay. Congregation, you have a response up on the screen. It starts through baptism. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. 
Congregation, members of the household of God, I commend Braxton and Reed to your love and to your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And you respond with, we give thanks. Okay, Braxton and Reed, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and you may live in peace. Amen. Okay, so can I, can I try and take both of them? I'm going to take Reed over here to this left side, and Braxton over here to the, help me out. This is my stronger, this is my strong side. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. Somebody want to walk next? No, I'm kidding. All right. Hey, look at these two handsome young men, huh? Is this great or what? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on, guys, huh? Yeah. I'm losing it. No. <laughs> I know how happy he is. Congratulations, you guys. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. Here, I have your certificates. Oh, thank you. Mom, Dad. Here you go. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Please bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We know that you're present with us in this place and we ask that your words speak to us and guide us as we leave. We continue to lift up our teachers, staff, and students as our school year begins. We are thankful for those that have volunteered in our congregation to lead our youth and adults as our Sunday school and Wednesday night programs are set to begin soon. Lord, we know that there are many in this place and those that can't be with us today that need, you, need to see you at work in their lives. And we lift up all those requests to you now. We pray for the family and friends of Marion Storm and Travis Howard. And now, Lord, we know you're with us as we come together with one voice and pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now please stand and join us in our song of worship, How Majestic Is Your Name.
Before I share this morning's scripture, uh, as you're departing uh, this morning from the church, uh, stop by and thank uh, Cal, who's running the sound, because he was kind enough to turn my microphone off while I was singing. So <laughs> make sure you give him a high five. So our scripture this morning is uh, Luke 13, 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indigenous because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And not, not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. I'd like to invite the children to come up for a few minutes. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Okay, I got probably one of the easiest questions that you'll be able to answer. In fact, if anybody knows Levi, you know, he does our, our youth stuff. You know Levi? Yeah, even Levi could answer this question. Okay, are you ready? What do I have in my hand? A spoon. A spoon, right? And a normal spoon, right? Soup, sir, whatever, you scoop it in and put it in your mouth, right? Peas, that's right, you're a peas lover. Yep. So even peas, if you like peas, right? Spoons are nice, they're handy, and they work great. But what happens if the spoon is bent? You can't use it, right? If you were to try and eat some cereal, you go like this and it just slide right off as you pull it out of the bowl, right? As a what? Slide. A slide. You see a slide in that? Yeah. Good imagination, yes. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't work right. And, you know, we could call this being bent out of shape, right? Because it's bent out of its shape. Right? Make sense? Did you know that physically we can be bent out of shape? There are some people who have this thing called arthritis and their fingers are kind of bent out of shape and it can be painful. Did you also know that people can be bent out of shape by being upset? Have you ever heard that before? No. You know, I, I could say, oh, I'm, I'm bent out of shape, or we could say they're bent out of shape, and that just means, it means that they're upset or I'm upset about something. And so Jesus tells this story about a lady who was physically bent out of shape, and um, he heals her. And the person, one of the people, one of the leaders of the time, was upset with Jesus. He got bent out of shape too. He got bent out of shape and was upset with Jesus because he did it on a day that he wasn't supposed to do it. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus cares what days people are healed on? Yeah. I don't think Jesus does. He wants people to be healed on any day. And the reason why it doesn't matter to Jesus is because he loves everybody. He cares for everybody. He wants everybody to be healthy as possible. So, so what I want you to remember is that when we get out of the bent, out of the shape, we need to remember how Jesus responds, right? Jesus doesn't respond by being bent out of shape. Jesus responds by caring for people. Okay, let's pray. 
Loving and gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. Um, we thank you for spoons. We thank you that, um, that Jesus loves each one of us so much that even rules that sometimes people get stuck with, he would rather hear somebody than follow those. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies first. Ladies first. Hold on, gentlemen. Hey. Patience. Okay. Are you ready for the gentleman? Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah, welcome. You're welcome. There's yeah. all these suckers in here. Yeah. One morning, uh, two uh, men decided uh, to go fishing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was a it was a very beautiful morning. The sun was out. There was a light breeze, and and best of all, the the fish were biting. Now, as these two men were enjoying their their time on the lake, one of the men noticed a man on the shore, and as he was looking at him, he's thinking to himself, "Man, this guy sure looks a lot like Jesus." And he turns to his friend and says, look at that guy on the shore. Does he look like Jesus? And just as he was saying that, the man on the shore starts waving them over. And he's waving and waving. So they decide, well, let's go see what this gentleman wants. So they start uh, rowing over. And uh, when they get to the shore, they get out and they look up. And sure enough, it's Jesus standing there. And they start having a conversation with him, talking about, you know, the trivial things, the weather and the fishing and that stuff. And then one of the gentlemen looks at Jesus and says, you know what? I've heard a lot of stories in the Bible about you healing people. Are, are those true? And Jesus looks at the man and says, yeah, they're, they're all true. He said, matter of fact, I think I'm darn good at healing people. And so the man asked Jesus to heal a herniated disc in his back. And Jesus said, sure, turn around. Jesus puts his hand on his back and the man is miraculously healed. Then the man looks, or then Jesus looks over at the other man, and the man's eyes got really big, his face turned white as a, white as a sheet, and he tells Jesus, don't come near me, Jesus. I'm on 100% disability. <laughs> no? Not doing it for you? Okay. <laughs> All right. Can, can you blame me for trying? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> All right. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear about uh, Jesus healing a woman. She had been crippled for uh, 18 years. And unlike this fisherman who had disability, this woman really wanted to be healed. And here's a person now in her life that, that can, can do it. That's how our story starts off. Now, let me just share with you that there's a lot of instances throughout Scripture, uh, the Gospels in particular, where Jesus heals people. In most, and if not all of these cases, there's always some underlining issue that's addressed or some kind of point that's made through these healings. The healing of the crippled woman in this morning's scripture reading is a great example of this. So kind of a, a summary or a hashing over this just briefly. In this morning's scripture, Jesus heals this woman in a Jewish synagogue in front of a Jewish leader of the synagogue and the Jewish leader gets upset at Jesus. In today's world, if we get sick, if we get injured, we go into the doctors, right? Doesn't matter if it's Tuesday, or if it's Wednesday, or if it's Sunday, if it's at 1 p.m. or 1 a.m., we just go to the doctors. The reason why the ruler of the synagogue is so upset is because healing someone 
on the Sabbath day was actually considered to be unlawful. So it wasn't so much about the woman being healed as it was Jesus healing her on a day that Jesus knew that it was illegal to do. What Jesus did would be akin to uh, me driving down into Hand County. <laughs> if you don't know, my son just was deputized in Hand County as a sheriff, a deputy sheriff. And so I'm going to use him as an illustration. He's not ready for it. So if I'm, if I'm cruising down the road and it's 65 and I see this deputy sheriff, Wes, parked on the side of the road with his, with his radar gun and I see that, the, and, and the speed limit's 65, and I'm doing 75, the logical thing is I'd slow down, right? But this, what Jesus is doing is akin to me seeing Officer Bowser on the side of the road and intentionally speeding up, right? That doesn't make sense. But that's what Jesus was doing. He knew full well that it was illegal to heal this woman on the Sabbath. He knew that. And yet here he is in the middle of a synagogue, right in front of the synagogue leader doing just that. Now if you stop and think about it, Jesus could have very easily have done any number of things. He could have done it the day before, right? He could have done it the next day. He could have snuck her into a back alley and healed her where no one would have seen. He didn't wait another day. He didn't heal her in secret. He intentionally did it on the Sabbath. As irrational as this might seem, it tells us, by, by hearing this, it tells us that there is some underlining issue or point that Jesus is bringing to light and wants to address. In this particular case, there's really actually three things here. One's common amongst all healing um, illustrations. Uh, and that for, that's the first one here. Uh, in every, every situation, uh, Jesus, when he's healing someone, it always points to his divine authority, his divine nature, his messiahship. So it does that. The second is connected to the verses leading up to this morning's uh, scripture where Jesus says that he did not come to bring peace but division. Think about it. This passage obviously makes this point, doesn't it? It makes that point, especially when Luke tells us that all of Jesus' adversaries were put to shame and all the people rejoiced. There's division. By healing the woman, division was created between the people and the synagogue leader. Now, I want to make it clear here. Jesus didn't come with the intent to create division, but he knows that division will come when the kingdom truth is spoken when the kingdom truth is contrary to what people believe or what people want to believe. Jesus knows that division will follow. Now the third reason and really uh, the main point here was that Jesus was trying to bring the issue of chronic hypocrisy and legalism to the surface. You know, sometimes in Judaism, there was a, a tendency to be hypocritical. This was true, especially of the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day, it was illegal to work on the Sabbath day. And so from the religious leader, the synagogue leader's perspective, healing somebody on the Sabbath would have been illegal because that required work. But Jesus calls them out, right? He says, hold up. Don't you guys go and tie your, your donkey or ox? Don't you lead them to get them water? Doesn't that require work on your part? You say that's okay, but you can't heal somebody? That's hypocrisy. There are also some very legalistic aspects uh, to, to Judaism as well that tended to overlook 
the spirit of God's law, the meaning, the purpose, the sincerity, the, the, the sense of God's law. And because of that, uh, people were prevented, like this woman, from being healed and cared for. So when we look at this scripture, it really isn't as much of a healing story as it is about Jesus courageously confronting hypocrisy and legalism of his time. This passage for us today is, is a wonderful reminder that everything that we do in the church should be done out of a sincere, heartfelt response to our faith in Jesus Christ. All that we do out of our personal faith and through the church should be done from a sense of genuine, authentic, caring faith. It should be done of the kind of love that, that speaks both hard truth but also with genuine grace. I'm going to say that again. It should be done out of the kind of love that speaks hard truth and with genuine grace. Now we're all growing in our faith, right? We're all on our journeys. We're in different places um, on our journeys of faith. We're constantly growing and maturing. We're reflecting and as time goes on, we get to be more and more like Jesus. That's part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Another part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is that we're to be making disciples of Jesus Christ. We're to be doing our part in, in transforming lives, not allowing people to stay where they're at, but to help them mature in their faith and to change and grow in their love of Jesus Christ. Helping people understand the joy that comes from things like repentance and living godly lives. The reason why I mention that is because hypocrisy and legalism are barriers to this. They get in the way. And, and so as Christians, we, we need to exercise some caution so, so that we don't intentionally or, or even possibly unintentionally uh, create stumbling blocks to the mission of the church and perhaps prevent people from experiencing uh, true Christian faith. That's the main point that Jesus is trying to get across in this morning's passage. That was his goal. That was his objective. But there's also a short uh, sub point here that I want to I want to share with you guys and very briefly share with you. But I think it's important, and I think we all need to hear it. That sub point is this: There's a lot of people in our world like this crippled woman. Some of those people I know are sitting in these pews. Some of you today may be physically, may be emotionally, may be spiritually hurt. Maybe some of you here this morning are, are living in fear of the future. Your health may be poor. Your job might be on the line. Maybe some of you are dealing with family matters that are really weighing you down. For those of you who are hurting, let me first say that we don't always understand why God heals some and doesn't heal others. What we do know, though, is there is some good news. And I want you to hear this loud and clear. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ truly cares about each one of our very specific struggles in our lives. He, he cares so deeply. He cares so much that, that he just would rather just throw all those laws, rules, processes, systems to the side and let you know that you are loved. Jesus Christ loves you and cares for you. 
He wants the best for you. And sometimes the best is, is when, we're, when we're serving, when we're sacrificing ourselves. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, gracious, compassionate, crazy compassionate, loving God. Lord, we, we thank you so much for the lives you have given to us. We thank you for the opportunities you give to us. We thank you so much for, for that love of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us never forget the kind of love that he has for us. And help us to be bold and courageous like him and, and speak truth and uh, speak grace to others as an expression of our love toward them. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just take a, a brief moment to uh, just to reflect and meditate on the scripture and the message. Just, just a brief moment. At this time, I'd ask you to please stand and join in singing Blessed Be Your Name. Also, the ushers will come forward to receive uh, this morning's tithes and offerings.
If you leave with anything today, my hope is that you leave knowing that uh, Jesus uh, loves you in such a crazy, magnificent way, um, so much so, and you know, I've, I know you've all heard this, that he was willing to die on a cross for us, but just put that image in your mind for a moment. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares for us. You know what? And he's going to be there and love on us even in our hard times, even in our struggles, even in our mistakes, even in our screw-ups. He's going to love us. So leave with that knowledge.